Hi, I'm Tyler Colt from Zanata Consulting, and this tutorial on the settings inside of Zoho Projects was taken from our 2022 webinar. If you do find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. And please leave any questions or feedback in the comments section because we do read every single one. Thank you and enjoy. Kind of similar to most Zoho applications, the settings tab is going to be up there in the top right. Um, oftentimes it's the little cog wheel for projects. It's like a wrench and screwdriver up there inside of our red box. Um, we'll kind of run through the settings here. We won't labor over each of the individual menus for too long, but it will kind of give you a top down of, of the things that you definitely want to check when you do log in and kind of get this set up for yourself. Um, so under personal settings, these are going to be unique to each user. This is kind of simple stuff like what type of color code do you want in the application? Do you want it to be in dark or light mode? So they call it day or night mode. Um, and then lastly, kind of down at the bottom, you can choose what page you want it to default to when you open up projects. Um, I have it selected to feed here as it's kind of a nice way to just get a like 30 second overview of what's going on on various projects. Of course, you could also choose to start on your home page or on projects, reports, your calendar, or a discussion page. Kind of moving down on the left, we'll jump into two sections that can trip people up a little bit, um, oftentimes because of the name. So the one we're in right now is this notifications and then personal email settings. Um, so these are unique to each user. So they are actually able to go in and change these settings for themselves. Um, in this case, you're basically determining what types of email notifications you want to receive from projects. So here up at the top, you know, I basically have notify me on assignment of a task if it's assigned to me, right? But notify me when a task is completed or reopened if I created it or if it's assigned to me. So I might have like assigned a task to somebody else and then I want to hear back when they complete that. Um, so you can kind of choose in which scenarios you want to be notified via email. Um, again, all this type of info would roll up in your feed and you'd see it in the project itself. Um, but it can be nice sometimes to get these types of emails based on activity inside of Zoho projects. Secondly, here you can choose kind of like as a admin or like whoever is doing the configuration of Zoho projects, you can basically set up what the default will be for a new user. Right. So here under org notifications, this is like our default. And then under personal, that's where a user can go in and kind of make these little fine tunings for themselves. Um, so two sections that can get a little bit tricky because they look identical, but essentially you're just doing a personal setting versus like an organization default um, for all these various email notifications that projects can send out. Um, next, kind of jumping to a couple other settings here under portal configuration, you're able to do things like change your portal name, add your logo, right? Define who your sender should be from projects. So by default, it's going to be like a notifications at zohoprojects.com. You could surely set that up as like a projects at zanata.com and then get that validated and then send from that address. Um, you can also through this menu, change the URL that you're using for projects. That can matter if you have client users in here. We'll kind of cover that a little bit later, but you can have like one of your clients actually log into projects and work on tasks or kind of just have visibility. And so if you were going to do that, you might want to make sure that your URL is kind of branded for you. Um, and then lastly, in here, if you did need to change the uh, kind of owner or super admin of the Zoho Projects account, um, you can do that from directly inside of this configuration page. Um, we're going to skip date and time settings here, as that's really just setting up your defaults around how you want to view dates. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, looking here under the projects and budget settings, we'll kind of touch on the projects here. Um, you, every project is going to get a prefix that's assigned to it. Um, you know, so project, your first one would be DE-1, DE-2. So you can come in here and change that prefix if you'd like. Um, here is where you can enable or disable the use of tags, which are kind of like an open way for people to categorize either projects or tasks that are in the system. Um, and then lastly, you can determine how you want to track project completion, right? So we're we basing it just on the count of completed tasks, or do I care more about a percentage? 
Um, that really only is going to matter if your projects vary a lot. Um, so if you had some projects that had 100 tasks and some that had 10, you might want to do it based on account. If they're all from like 10 to 15, maybe you want to base it on a percentage, just make it a little cleaner to look at. But that's kind of up to you in terms of how you want to kind of score your projects and their progress. Our next little bits of settings here are around tasks and timesheets. Um, so we'll run through these relatively quickly. So if you want to um, maintain task order, which basically means, you know, if I have tasks that are kind of linked or connected to each other. If I move one in the list, do I want the rest of them to move as well? Um, do we want to include a prefix on our tasks? Again, kind of similar to the project section. Um, then you can also determine how you want to track task duration. Um, so you can either track it in days. So I could say this task is going to take us from the, you know, Monday to Tuesday to complete, or I could say that it's going to take us 10 work hours to complete. Um, oftentimes, a lot of people end up tracking these based on hours um, because at the end of the day, you never know how tasks are going to get split within a certain day, but you always know approximately how long in work hours things are going to take. Um, the next little option there for resource allocation, that's a pretty slick one. So this will basically give you a view. So if I'm assigning a task to Brett and Brett already has 20 hours of tasks over the next three days, when I go to assign or update the due date, it's going to kind of show that for me. Um, so if you can think about the little calendar drop down, it'll color code days as kind of red, yellow, or green based on that person's availability and the assigned work hours that they already have. Definitely recommend leaving that on. Um, just really nice to have as you're going through and kind of scheduling things out. Um, next one is, do you want to kind of get alerted if an issue is associated with the task? And, you know, as issues kind of move through uh, their various processes, do you want to see that on the task record? Uh, generally, you do, right? So if you had one of your tasks for, you know, setting up Zoho CRM, and we had an issue that we didn't have login credentials, and then that issue got resolved, I would surely want to show that on the task because we're no longer stuck based on that issue. Um, the last little group of settings here are really around task dependencies. Uh, we're going to cover in the templates section kind of how we go about setting up those dependencies. Um, these three little options basically break down as, you know, if I have a task that is before another and I move that first task forward, should I also move the following tasks forward? Um, generally, people like that on but it'll depend on your particular project, right? You might want to say, hey, we're not going to start or finish on task two early just because we finished task one early. Um, what we found is most people want to get on to that next step. So we'll generally have that on by default. Um, extend due dates is exactly the opposite, right? So if I bump the first task backwards, should all the following dependent tasks move backwards as well? Um, generally, yes, we always want to do that because if we're behind on the first one, we're definitely going to be behind on the next one. So we want our Gantt charts to kind of reflect where we're actually at in the process. Um, and then lastly here, it is kind of around complete, completion or reopening of predecessor tasks. So in this case, basically, maybe I had task one that I marked as completed, and then I started on task two. Well, imagine task one gets reopened, right? And we kind of reopen it and move it back a couple of days and say, hey, we got to redo this. Do we want that to affect the following tasks? Again, generally speaking, yes. Um, it would be up to your decision if you wanted to turn that off, but these are all going to be on by default because um, generally speaking, this is what people want. And then lastly, down here at the very bottom of this section, you'll have the dependency type that you want to have as your default. So Zoho projects can work on a finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, or start to finish methodology. Nine times out of 10, when you're setting up dependencies, it's finish to start, basically meaning I need to finish task one before I start task two. So that will be the default setting in projects. But if you did want to change it because of how you run things internally, this is where you would go to do that. Um, next, we'll quickly touch on a couple timesheet settings here. Um, so a few of these, the one up at the top is actually a really important one that was added not too long ago. Um, we're basically asking, do we want to allow people to log hours for tasks that they don't own? So the setting right now is saying you can only log hours if you own the task. If you bump that over to all, it would allow anybody to log hours against that task. 
Now, not everybody always wants to have all selected here, but it's important to know that it is. Um, cases where it is might be you have a primary person responsible for a task and they're the owner. But in your business rule, you might have other people that could be working on that. And so you'd want to have it set to all in that case. A couple other little options here, you know, if you wanted to allow people to log hours for things that have already been closed or completed, um, do you want to allow or disallow that? Um, do you want to allow people to have multiple timers running at once? Um, again, you know, moving down here, do you want to only allow people to log time up to our work hours, which is kind of like your forecasted hours? That one you need to be a little bit careful with. If you're using this to calculate payroll, then you have to allow people to bill their actual time. If you were just using this to kind of track billable time to a client, however, you might not want to have that on so that you're not doing any overbilling on your estimated hours. Um, lastly, down here at the bottom, just a couple quick settings. You know, do you want to allow people to log future and past time? Uh, do we want to set any limits about how much time could be logged in a week or day? Um, and then lastly, kind of another new one. Do you want to send out any reminders if people have not logged a certain amount of time? So again, if, if you have hourly employees and the goal is for them to log eight hours, you might want to have that on and have it notify them at the end of the day, basically saying, hey, we expected you were going to log eight. You've only logged six. Do you need to make any updates before we kind of close out the day? Um, kind of moving right on down our left hand side, a couple items on customization. Um, so similar to most Zoho apps, we can actually customize the fields that are available in most of the records and projects. Um, I'm going to show it for projects, but this will apply for tasks, timesheets, issues, and milestones as well. Um, so here I've kind of opened up projects and I'm looking at our standard layout. So if I click through that, I'll basically get a little, you know, drag and drop interface where I can add any additional fields that I need into my project um, kind of record. So in this case, I'll add one that we kind of add for people all the time, which is a URL field for a work drive link. Um, without going down a rabbit hole, oftentimes projects get automatically created based on stuff that happens in CRM. And maybe we want to pull their like client files down to the project automatically. So we can set up a URL field that you could use to just enter in the uh, address of that client's file. Um, there is kind of a suite of automation within Zoho projects that you can run from the task automation section. I will say task automation is kind of a misleading name. Um, blueprints here kind of actually apply to tasks. So you're in essence building a structured pathway for a task to move through statuses, right? So I could say that when a task goes from open to blocked, we're gonna automatically send an email to Brett. Um, when a task goes from blocked to finished, we're gonna notify that original person, you know, all those types of kind of if then statements related to your tasks in particular. Um, then you also have workflow rules these are going to feel really familiar if you're used to working inside of you know, CRM or desk. The one thing to note with workflow rules right now is that they're only supported for a project, not for all the tasks in a project. So this would be something like when a project is created and it's this type of project, notify this person or that person that it was created. Um, so not specific to the task, but to the project as a whole. We're going to skip issue tracker for now. The issues kind of run as their own little bucket here inside of Zoho projects. Um, so I will highlight that Zoho projects does have, as with most Zoho apps, a full marketplace of external plugins. Um, these cover everything from, you know, Slack, DocuSign, Google Drive, all the way down to all the various Zoho applications as well. Um, we're not going to go through the Zoho apps now. We'll kind of circle back on those at the tail end here and walk through how those are configured. Um, lastly, I did see a question in our chat on this one around imports. Um, so you surely can import projects uh, via a spreadsheet. You can do this to create either templates or active projects. Um, you know, actually, you have to import it as an active project, then you could save it as a template from there. Um, the formatting is a little particular. You'll have to make sure the columns all kind of line up with what it's expecting. Um, but most of the time, if you're getting an export from, I know that Microsoft projects will import directly. Most other tools might just have to be reformatted to kind of fit the uh, data schema that Zoho projects uses. 
And then lastly here, we'll circle back on this one and deep dive on it on the tail end, but under the settings is where you would manage all of your various users and permissions. That will apply both for internal users, which they'll call portal users, as well as client users, which would be like an external person who you're inviting to get some visibility or input on an active project. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you did find it useful, please again, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that really helps us out and it'll make sure that uh, YouTube shows you our videos in the future when we put out more tutorials just like this one. Um, if you do have any questions or feedback, uh, make sure to leave those in the comments as well. We really do appreciate that. Helps us get better and better. And uh, after all that, we will uh, see you on our next tutorial video.